Come on, now's your time. We can hear you. What the hell is that? Oh my god. What was that? Who was that? It went blank. What the fuck does blank mean? Are you downstairs? Over there. Right over there. Where? Glowing candles must make the outside windows look very freaky. I hope so. I hope he freaks out the neighbors. Why did you kill their kids? Time for them? What did you say? Time for them? Come on, now's your time. We can hear you. In a few words, I would describe my time in the Belisca house as unsettling, strange, and lingering. I wasn't sure how it was going to feel to walk into that place. I'd never investigated a house where eight people were murdered. The whole house has a vibe. As soon as you walk in, broad daylight, it doesn't matter what time you go into that place. There, there is a vibe of something bad happened here. It felt like we had walked into a crime scene that was cleaned up days prior. Like it had just happened. And a hundred years, hundred plus years, haven't washed away that stain. Just wanted to go and see the headstones and and say a few words to the children and and mom and dad more about how we weren't uh, there to cause any sort of negativity. The Stillingers were these two girls who came to stay with the Moors after this church event on June tenth. So with them staying on the ground floor in a small bedroom off the living room, the parents upstairs, and the four other children of theirs in the bedroom, this crime scene must have been horrific. History isn't sure if someone else covered the mirrors because of the mourning practices at that time, or if the killer did it. Of course, this place has been on television many times, and you know, it's hard to get a gauge of what it's actually like in there. 
but seeing the backstroke of an axe mark on the wall was truly, truly chilling. I might have rolled in kind of thinking, okay, people say it's haunted because something here happened that was horrible. But what am I going to experience? What are we going to walk away with? We had enough hours that we could go in and get a feel for the place, just to see what it felt like and what it sounded like in there, what the space was like, and really how we felt in that space. So I'm all by myself here. And I'm alone. Is there anybody here with me? Hello? All these stories around you, do you still play with them? The loudest and most striking voice that I got through the SB7 spirit box was something that appeared to sound Spanish, but there was more to it than that, and it's hard to show you that, but I felt like a little shock wave through me when that voice came through and it immediately set me on edge. Any of the more family? Um, oh my god. What was that? Who was that? Are you in here? My solo time in there didn't really feel overwhelming or foreboding, but the walkie-talkie went off in a way that it shouldn't have, really. Was that you guys? Straight up voices just came through it. That's our explanation for that. Who did this? Who did this heinous crime? What? Oh man. What's your name? Whoa. Are you downstairs? Over there. Right over there. Where? Where? Where over there? My particular session gave me uh, some feelings I've never had in the paranormal and, and all my time investigating. I, I felt like something was toying with me, but in a, in a more psychological sense. Some of the evidence that we captured when we were outside in the house was some of our strongest, I believe. We didn't realize in leaving the cameras rolling and all leaving the house for 10, 20 minutes at a time, we'd end up with the sound of footsteps in the house. No one is in there.
Come on, now's your time. We can hear you. Sonic boom? That was freaking loud. Not kind sonic, of. but it didn't sound like the trucks or the train. Felt it, yeah. yeah. It was something different. I mean, it felt sound like a giant gust of wind, but it's calm yeah. out there. That was weird. Mm -hmm. what, what was it you guys trying for that? Why was it their time? No. Yeah. yeah. Could that low rumble that we heard be some portal or something like that opening? right in front of us. It's hard to say for sure, but the activity certainly picked up after that incident. Using EMF. Okay. That's new to me. That's new. What the fudge? Temperature's dropping. Yeah, it was 69 point something just a minute ago. Dropping rapidly. Yeah. Who's here with us? And the millimeter just went off 2.3. Whoa. And we're down to 67.8 over here. I got 66 on the mill, 65.8. Yeah, definitely. Did someone walk into the attic with us? just validated if not for anyone else for ourselves that what Johnny Hauser told us to begin with about this loud sound that only could be heard and felt in the house was something we actually experienced are we invading your space right now There's so much of it that doesn't make sense. That's what's absurd. And he had to have found the axe and brought it in here with him before I did. Yeah, but the axe would have just been leaning against the house or something. Well, yeah, no, I'm, I'm just saying, like, he, that part had to have been thought of ahead of time and brought inside with him. Like, he had a plan. Okay. Right. Did this thing just go down a bit? Go blank? blank? It went blank. What the fuck does blank mean? What the hell? I've never seen that. Is it dying? Turn it off and on. It's dying. It's dying. Oh no. We then decided to leave the EMF meter and the spirit box and the cameras rolling in that attic while we were gone for at least 10 minutes. to the credibility of all the devices involved when they're all working together to create one phenomenon. There's nothing there of that activity to indicate a particular someone, but it indicates that something happens when even nobody is in that house. When your device says evil, you've got to wonder if that's at least an aspect of the haunting there. some 
fastest method. said that one. Does anyone know what happened, really? That dog. What? We did get a disembodied voice saying arrest me. Uh, the relevance to the story of that house and the history cannot be denied. What do you do in 1912 to get your whole family killed that way? I just can't imagine. How. Steal someone's business, sleep with their wife. Yeah, I suppose. I suppose there's... Same things you do nowadays to yeah. get your whole family killed. Well, but damn. Were you scared being downstairs when they were all up there? Almost like it said Stillinger. Hmm. Seems to come and go in waves a little bit yeah, in a lot of places, time. but when's the tsunami coming? We kind of wondered as, as the night went on if the intensity of the activity we were experiencing would pick up, and it most certainly did. Did your mom and dad tell you monsters weren't real? Just depressed the fuck out of me. This has got to be the most horrible line of questioning I've ever heard. Yeah, what do you, I mean, what the hell do you say? I'm suspecting that, you know, the ones that didn't wake up might not know they're dead. That seems to be the running theory in the paranormal. If you die suddenly in your sleep, you don't know you're dead. Hmm. 1912. Right, I don't know what the car ride is about either. Yeah. I was like, Maybe train that's car. what them kids like. I mean, there's... That's probably exciting. They just, they just said no. No? So forget the train, huh? I mean, that was clear. I just heard a big noise. Out there? Big crack, yeah. Hello? Couldn't tell if it came from in there or downstairs, but... sounds all around us throughout the nights, little pings, little pops, little cracks, but not being in that house all the time and not knowing its natural sounds, it's hard to really say that that's paranormal, but it could be. All right, Daryl. Yeah. You're up. Last night. Last night? A woman's voice. What the f- Ooh. I don't know what I just heard, but it sounded like a little kid's voice just broke through like three or four stations. Well, between Desta's method and using the spirit box out loud, we all definitively heard children's voices at different portions of the night. Does that mean that those voices are those kids? Absolutely not. We can't point from A to B in such a straight line. As the night wore on, what seemed to be the most prominent occurrence were these noises. And upon looking back in our footage, actual voices out loud. We're can you back. Can you speak with us? Come into the attic. Sure. Can you, can you speak with us? <laughs> 
attic. Come into the attic. Right. Yeah, come into the attic. whatever you want to tell us. You hear that? No. Mm -hmm. I heard something downstairs-ish. Something like that. Like that. Someone's guts making noise. Not me either. Then what the hell was that? midnight to 2 a.m. it seems like the activity kind of drops off and other investigators have said this too. And Jody and Daryl's only response in the spirit box just said, I'm done. You can talk to us through this thing that's making so much noise. A lot of the paranormal we're finding, especially in the ghost realm of it all, is, is intent and what you go in with. Amy and I went in with the intent to to make communication. It's Jody and Daryl, their intent's a little bit different, not necessarily to debunk, but to just experience. And I think that reflected in the lack of activity that they experienced without Amy and I in the room. What's for dinner? Potatoes? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> it's okay. We're going to keep... Supper? That's what I heard too. What did you say? We had been told by other investigators that the first floor bedroom was a little weird and that they had felt the most unsettled in there. And that's the room that Brian and I went into when everything went crazy. One of the tactics that I personally like to use when I'm close to wrapping up an investigation is to bid a good night to whoever communicated with us. And I'll tell you what, quite a few times it's answered back. Hey guys. I know it's late, but I just wanted to say goodnight to you. <gasps> Are you serious right now? Are you serious right now? Yeah, I got I got chills hard. Which one which one said that? I can't see you right now. That was me. Can you tell us if you're at peace? If everything's okay? Okay? We're oh. fine. Oh. Put this on me. You want me to put my, on my shoulder? Turn a little more. Turn more towards me. Nothing? No, it's just heat signature of your body. Something like, went like this. Like down my shoulder. Oh, maybe I'm just feeling weird stuff, being overtired. 
That's interesting. That's some interesting stuff. This house was a psychological, uh, a psychological trip because this house, something will come with you. The uh, the stink of that heinous crime definitely washed over me. It was very difficult to wash off. It left something with both of us. And it lasted, and it lasted after we got home the next day. And it seemed to last days on. Having to seek help afterwards for, for that very thing, uh, I'm a believer in that now. I don't think as an investigator you can walk into that house and just say, I'm gonna solve it, we're gonna figure it out. I think what you get to figure out from that is how that kind of environment can interact with you and the people you're with for that time. I think we inadvertently entered into communication with something, all four of us at the same time in that attic. As far as I've ever investigated, the, the most rare case of possibly a portal. But we couldn't communicate in English words through the Estes method. It shook the entire house instead. Is this house haunted? I'd definitely say yes. But it's also something much more. It's a doorway to where we don't know, and we can't walk through it. But whatever's on the other side can definitely walk through towards us.